I think the most fun we've had in the three years that we've been working with Max Rose, the most fun has been that we've played it for audiences unbelievably different. And we got wonderful, wonderful responses that we paid attention to in the final editing process. But what I did do was that I had a Q&A with those audiences because they gave me such feedback. They gave me such information by their questions and by their points of view. And I took those notes with me to the cutting room. It's amazing at how so many people that had nothing to do with the film had points of view that were critical and that I remembered and that I kept. And Daniel Ella and I edited for six months and putting back, pulling back, and going to this and going to that, going back to that, going back to that. And it gets crazy, but the audiences were just incredible with their information, not meaning to be informative, but they were, by what they had to ask and remember. So I have taken full advantage of that, because although it's done, for me it's not through. I'm still cutting a movie I did 32 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still not right. <laughs> but a Q&A is interesting because you get a chance to talk to the people who have different points of view and people who have an idea or a thought. And it's amazing how you can take those things, put them in the, in, in the bowl, and stir it up, and it comes out wonderfully. So if you want to have a chat, here I am. <laughs> chat. <laughs> and whoever wants to start it, I never can get someone to start it. They all run. I'll start it, Jerry. What is it? <laughs> Susan Anton here. First of all, bravo, wonderful. Yeah. I've known you a long time, my friend, and I'm, it's wonderful to see you up there on the screen again after all these years. Thank you. What drew you to the project? Your, what drew you to the material? Well, Daniel sent me the script on a Monday, and Tuesday evening I was signing contracts. Mm -hmm. It was fast, because the last time I read a script that I believed would make a wonderful movie was The Nutty Professor, yeah. <laughs> naturally. And uh, I thought that, my God, what a perfect film to show people and find out what they think and so on. And, you know, I haven't had, haven't had the, the experience of filmmaking for 20 years, but you don't forget it. You remember every frame. And um, I fell in love with the script first read, which is incredibly different than normal. I have read scripts 15 times and couldn't get it to work, or 10 times because I loved it and then I couldn't get it bought. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on after the film. So, in answer to your question, what was her question? <laughs> I was curious what attracted you to the material, because it's a very personal story. Well, what attracted me was how love can really generate a difference in the personality of a human being. And I fell in love with the thought that anyone can fall in love and everyone will fall in love and the beauty of love as far as I'm concerned is that it makes you better it makes you stronger it gives you direction it gives you understanding of what life is and what we've been given 
And I love my girl so ferociously and so beyond any way I could ever explain it. And I saw her in the script. She was my Ava. Mm -hmm. And the night that I committed to do the film, I told Sam, I have a present for you, but it will probably take a couple of years. <laughs> so, so be patient, sweetheart. And she was. But it brought me so close to the material that I had to make the movie. I just had to. We're glad you did. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Jim Brassage, KIYQ Radio. Who? Jim Brassage, right here. I sat behind you the whole movie. I just had to ask you some questions, but I didn't want to wait until the movie was over. It was fabulous. I wouldn't be surprised if it wins an award. <laughs> and, yeah. and no wonder you're going so strong, because the way you explain love, you got a lot of it coming at you all the time. That's, I'm sure that's what keeps you going so strong, Jerry. God bless you. You're fabulous. Thank you, Jim. I'm sure you're right. <laughs> Nutty professor. What did you what did you think of Eddie Murphy's portrayal of that role? I thought he did a wonderful job. In, in a different sense, uh, sense. yes. It, it was be. my financial pleasure, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Tony? Yeah. Tony Orlando. Where is Tony Orlando? Hey Tom. Hi, sweetie. A couple of things about this film. One, the mixture of love and forgiveness was so powerful in this film. That moment when you forgave Dean Stockwell may be one of the most powerful moments I've ever seen in film. That you had this love for your wife. We sensed your anger. At the same time, you understood his love for her. It's typically Jerry. Max Rose and Jerry Lewis are very much in the same person. I've known you 43 years. And in those 43 years, I've learned that you have known the power of love and the power of forgiveness. And at 90 years old, for you to do a film like this to give to all of us as a learning curve for us to take in our lives, You've given us many gifts of laughter, but this film you've given us is the greatest gift of all. Thank you. That's the truth. Thank you, Tommy. You're I, welcome. I promise, after hearing what you said, I'm going to immediately start buying stuff from Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, just as a, just as a performer, I want to ask you one more question. As a performer, where did you find the discipline and consistency in the rhythm of this film to never shake that rhythm? Was it a conscious thing? Did the script demand that? Was it a direction? Or was it just instinctual? It was probably 90% instinctual, but I had such, I had such elements that were bumping in and out of my head because I had to maintain the character I was playing and that's tough after the silly crap I've done. <laughs> and to sustain it, I had to give some very heavy duty, deep thinking yeah. about concentrating on Max Rose. And I did good. I know I did good because he never once double crossed me. <laughs> I love you. I love you back, Tony. Anybody in my neighborhood? Right? <laughs> Pam? Hi, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Hi. We're here, John. Hello, John. Want me to stand? 
Away from the film, we talked about your vision for the Martin and Lewis musical that you want to bring to New York by the end of next year. Can you share a little bit of what um, what is motivating you and why that's important to you right now? Well, it's it's in the in the talking and thinking stage, John. It's not anywhere near what I hope it'll be. That'll take a couple of years. So at 92, I plan to open on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lucky to make 90 that I figure if I keep wishing for 92, it'll happen. Uh, lady over here? Hi, yes. I'm Patty Hevener, and I just wanted to say, is anybody else in here crying like me and my sister? Yes. <laughs> what? Is anybody else crying like me and my sister here? We just can't stop bawling, but I just wanted to say thank you, and uh, we really enjoyed everything we saw in the movie. Your sister crying? Well, me and my sister, we just can't stop crying up here. <laughs> Okay, get her the hell out of here. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Here we go, sir. Where? Right here. Yes, sir. George Pecoraro, hi. Um, well, you really turned this upside down emotionally. That's it, it hit home, and it's very, for somebody that normally makes us laugh, that was just unbelievable. Did you have as much fun doing that film as it seems like you probably did personally? Well, we had fun, but we had to concentrate. And it was the only film I've ever made that kept me absolutely dedicated without any adjustments or additions. Just do the script. The script was honest. It was written well. And there was nothing I could do other than spoil it but to do the scripted material, that's what's up there. You nailed it. I tried. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone nearby? A hand? Where's a hand? There's a hand. There you go. Yes. Yes, I want to say that it was a wonderful performance on your behalf, and I hope you win the Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to nominate you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I know you're a writer, and I'm a writer, and I'm just curious, do you have any movies that you're currently writing yourself or working on any new projects yeah. on this? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to them then. <laughs> I hope you do. You'll hear about it, I promise. Okay, someone? Yes. Okay, so how about this gentleman right behind you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Lewis, with all of your wonderful performances here in Las Vegas, uh, how would you compare your performances here with uh, making movies? Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts on uh, what you uh, prefer doing uh, uh, in that regard, comparing movies to live performances? Give me an audience and I don't care where we have to do it. <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Hi, my name is Carol. Hi. And I just want to first thank you for teaching me how to laugh. From the time I was really little, I just um, fell in love with you. Well, that's nice. You want to tell that to my wife? <laughs> thank you very much. I so appreciated um, seeing this movie and seeing you in person. Uh, I did have a question for you. I hope it's okay to say something. As I am a widow. And I was, when you were talking, when they were talking to you and they wanted you to be over, be over it already, like, why are you still over? And I thought it had been a lot of time, but it had just been one day. So I was curious I, if that was written in the script on purpose or what was the, the I meaning behind that? I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> I didn't hear your question. So the question was, um, and I didn't know it was right after the funeral in this movie as Max Rose. And um, it was asked of you, um, why aren't you over it yet? Basically, you were being speeded through the process of grief. And I'm just wondering, was that a purpose that they did it that way? Because I find that often that people think that uh, you are going to be over with it soon, and you're not, just like you said, towards the end. Grief is forever, darling. Right. And I believe that because I've lived there, as so many of you have, 
You have to look at grief, hope it goes away, but it doesn't. And if the grief is genuine, it's because you loved hard mm. and because you're being deprived of that love. And love is a very strange, wonderful gift that God gives us. And if you don't treat it right, it will treat you wrong. So we watch ourselves very carefully. Yeah. Jerry, I was wondering if there's any progress on the Nutty Professor musical. <laughs> the musical is still discussions. The discussions are infinite because when you're talking about Broadway, you're talking about four or five hundred people that become your partners. And they are a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to your own money and do it, which is what we usually do. Yes? Jerry, yeah. uh, good afternoon. Robin Leach. Um, Robin Leach? Wow. Hi, is there a, how are you, sir? I'm well, thank you. Good, good. <laughs> is there a message in this movie as well about the way that family should treat family at time of death? Is there a message here for the way that young people in America should look after the elderly? Is there an underlying message there of generation gap? I believe the, the underlying message came from Daniel and myself. We both believed so desperately, we believed in what we were doing, that I think a lot of the things that we did became better because of that. And uh, you can't do a film like this and just forget what the genesis is. You don't forget that. And when you commit to this kind of a film, you better know you're into it for three or four years. And in the three or four years, you hope it generates more love, more understanding. And it certainly wasn't made to teach anyone anything. It was made to remind those that are watching it how important what they feel is. And we're not message makers. We're filmmakers. Okay. Yeah, Jerry Norm Johnson. Hi, Norm. How are you doing? Uh, you're going to be at the South Point on the on the thirtieth, I believe, two yeah. nights. Thirtieth and first and second. Yeah, three, three, three nights. Uh, is it going to be like a Q and A? No. Is. No, 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 no. I work my ass off on those shows. <laughs> and they're wonderful because I am, I, I am totally free to do what I want. Don't have to do it because of this. Don't have to do it because of that. I walk on the stage and I'm so thrilled that there's an audience that I, I perform. <laughs> the question right behind sure. you. Jerry, yeah. uh, great to meet you. Two questions. Number one, did you have any say in the casting? Because you and Kevin Pollack, I thought, had great chemistry. Yeah, Dan, yeah. Danny and I, we, we, we looked at about 28 women, or 30 women, and that girl that played Annie great. ripped me apart. She was so nice and so wonderful that I saw the actress come through the woman. And I said, grab her now. And she was a joy to work with. Absolutely, yeah. Wonderful girl. Perfect, perfect casting. And number two, I read it about a year ago, don't get mad at this question. Someone always asks you, the day the clown died, is that getting released? I read about a year nope, ago. it will never be released. So I read wrong, okay. Right. Okay, we'll never be released. Well, you're one of those people that we have to beat up. On. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what, what if a hedge fund manager or something came to you and said, I'll give you five, ten million for it? Because I heard you have like one of the only copies. What would you say? What would I say? Robert? If a hedge fund manager or some billionaire guy, seriously, and said, I'll give you 30 million, I just want to watch this movie. They've done it already. Uh, okay. <laughs> They've right. come to me already, and I told them what to do with their money. Very yeah. interesting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Very Right here. Hello, Mr. Lewis. Uh, my name is Carrie Stratton. Could you share a little bit about the song that you sang in there? You're nobody at all, or uh, somebody? Somebody. 
written by Harry Warren and Jack Brooks, and I stole it from myself because I had used it in Cinderella. What you got there? Cinderella. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you have the whole film. Well, it's, no, it's, it's the album. Oh, the album. Oh yeah, that was good, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got it. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. Anyone? Oh. This gentleman here. Yeah, my name's Jerry. Uh, what's your five favorite co comedy films you did? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know them all by name? <laughs> a few. Huh? A few. Do I? Hell oh, yeah. What are your five favorite ones you've done? Oh? <laughs> what are the five favorite Five favorite? Your five favorites. Your, your five favorite ones. <laughs> well, that's none of your goddamn business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit here for four hours and remember. <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, I have two things to say. That the movie was really food for thought. I just loved it. That you had a strong character. You didn't wimp out. But now I have another question for you. While I was waiting on line for you, I thought back to my first movie. I saw it at the Tivoli Theater in Washington, D.C. at 14th and Park Road, Northwest. And it was a story about this guy in this, uh, I don't know what it was, but he ran around with a lot of girls to help them. And I've been wanting to know what the name of that movie is because I've been oh, trying to get... Oh, I remember that. Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> no, 